Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about ductile detailing of beams. As we all know that detailing is very very important part in structural design of any structural member and beam is one of the horizontal structural member which takes the loads from slab and transfer to column. So it is very important to detail the structural members when it is subjected to earthquake loads. So we have to do ductile detailing mainly when we are dealing with earthquake design. So in this video, let's discuss about what are all the factors we need to consider while ductile detailing of beams. Without delay, let's begin now. We are going to do the ductile detailing of beams as per IS 13920-2016. In this, we are going to discuss size of the beam, longitudinal reinforcement, splicing of longitudinal bars and then transverse reinforcement so these all things we are going to discuss as per is 13920-2016 before starting let's look into the reinforcement details so this is the beam we have the reinforcements longitudinal reinforcement as well as transverse reinforcement so the longitudinal reinforcement is parallel to the length of the beam as you can see here this is the longitudinal reinforcement which is parallel to the length of the beam at top as well as at bottom bottom is called as tension and top is is called as compression compression and this is called stirrups this links transverse reinforcement is there right so this links is called stirrups stirrups in beams and ties in column this is stirrups this is compression reinforcement and this is tension reinforcement so in this way you have to understand the reinforcement arrangement in beams this is the cross section whereas this is the longitudinal section of the beam as you can see here this is the longitudinal section and this is the cross section of the beam so here this is your compression zone and here it is tension zone and this is the stirrup transverse reinforcement the transverse reinforcement has to hold all the longitudinal reinforcement and it will act as a shear resistance first let's start with the size of the beam as per IS 13920-2016, class number 6.1.1, the beam shall preferably have width to depth ratio of more than 0.3. So the width to depth ratio shall be more than 0.3. The beam shall not have width less than 200. So the width of the beam shall not be less than 200 mm. Beam shall not have depth D more than one fourth of clear span. This is the effective depth and if you take the overall depth, that is D, capital D, that shall not be more than one fourth of the clear span. When you take the inner dimensions of the support, that will be your clear span. So one fourth of the clear span, the beam depth shall not exceed one fourth of the clear span. This may not be applied to the floor beam of frame staging of elevated RC water tanks. And the next criteria is width of beam BW shall not exceed width of supporting member C2 plus distance on either side of the supporting member equal to the smaller of A and B. Here A and B is given. A is width of supporting member C2, 0.75 times breadth of the supporting member C1. This let's check in figure 1A and 1B in IS. 13920. Here we have the cross section of the beam. This is the breadth of the beam and this is the overall depth of the beam whereas this is your effective depth of the beam. So as we have discussed before, the first point is beam shall preferably have width to depth ratio more than 0.3. So width to depth ratio, width to effective depth, small d is effective depth and capital D is overall depth. Width to effective depth ratio shall be more than 0.3 and the second one is beam shall not have width less than 200 mm and third one is beam shall not have depth more than one fourth of the clear span depth shall not be more than one fourth of the clear span and the last one is width of the beam bw shall not exceed the width of the supporting member and then next condition is width of the beam shall not exceed 0.75 bc bc is breadth of the supporting member let's look into this figure beam column junction so here 1a has the plan view of a beam column joint showing effective breadth and width of the joint. Width of the supporting member we have C2 that is given here 
here and 0.75 times breadth of the supporting member C1 that is given here. So according to this, we need to consider the breadth of the B. Next one is longitudinal reinforcement. As I have told you before, this is the longitudinal reinforcement. Longitudinal reinforcement will be parallel to the length of the beam. So in class number 6.2, the longitudinal reinforcement details are given. The longitudinal reinforcement in beam shall be as given below. Beam shall have at least two 12 mm diameter of bars each at top and bottom faces. So we have top and bottom faces, compression and tension. So in both sides, we have at least two 12 mm diameter bars shall be provided each at top and bottom faces. And how much shall be the percentage of reinforcement? Minimum longitudinal steel ratio be minimum required on any face at any section, either at the top face or bottom face. Any face, P minimum shall be 0.24 root FCK by FY. Here, FCK represents the compressive strength of concrete and FY represents the characteristic strength of steel. For example, let's consider FCK as 25 Newton per millimeter square and FY characteristic strength of steel as 500 Newton per millimeter square. Then your P minimum will be P minimum is equal to 0.0024. If we convert this one into percentage, then it will become 0.24 percentage. So if this is the characteristic strength of concrete and characteristic strength of steel, then your P minimum will be 0.24 percentage. Minimum 0.24 percentage of steel has to be provided as the longitudinal reinforcement in top as well as bottom face of the B. Similarly, we need to check for maximum longitudinal steel ratio that is P max provided on any face at any section that is 0 0.025. So P max let's convert into percentage that will become 2.5 percentage. So maximum percentage of longitudinal reinforcement shall be 2.5 percentage. Minimum percentage of longitudinal reinforcement is depend on the characteristic strength of concrete as well as characteristic strength of steel. But maximum percentage would be 2.5 percentage. Third one is splicing of longitudinal bars. So that is given in class number 6.2.6.1. When adopted, closed link shall be provided over the entire length over which the longitudinal bars are spliced. The spacing of this link shall not exceed 150 mm. See figure 3. So the figure 3 is given here. So the spacing of this links that is stirrups shall not exceed 150 mm. Where we provide the lap splices in that area, the spacing of this links should not exceed 150 mm. The lap length shall not be less than the development length of the largest longitudinal reinforcement bar in tension. Lap splices shall not be provided within joint, within distance of 2D from the face of the column and within quarter length of the beam adjoining location where flexural yielding may occur under earthquake effects. So these conditions we have to remember while doing the splicing of longitudinal bars and not more than 50% of area of steel bars on either top or bottom face shall be spliced at any one section. And the last one is transverse reinforcement. In normal practice, a link is made of a single bent bar, but it may be made of two bars also, namely a U link with a 135 degree hoop with an extension of 6 times diameter but not less than 65 mm at each end embedded in the core concrete under cross ties. Let's check that one in figure 4b. Figure 4b has the U stirrup and cross tie and here we have the minimum diameter of a link shall be 8 mm. The diameter of the link minimum link diameter shall be 8 mm. Next let's look into close spacing of links. Spacing of links over a length of 2D at either end of a beam shall not exceed D by 4, 8 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar and 100 mm. See figure 6. Figure 6 is having details of transverse reinforcement in beams. So the spacing of links over a length of 2D at either end of a beam shall not exceed. So this is 2D and here also 2D either end of the beam shall not exceed d by 4 8 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar so we we have provided the longitudinal bars right among that smallest longitudinal bar we need to consider smallest dia of the longitudinal bar we need to consider 8 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar and 100 mm next the first link shall be 
at a distance not exceeding 50 mm from the joint face as you can see here the first link shall be at a distance of 50 mm from the joint face from the joint face it shall be 50 mm and next one is closely spaced link shall be provided over a length equal to 2d on either side of a section where flexural yielding may occur under earthquake effect so in order to avoid that we need to provide closely spaced links over a length equal to 2d on either side of a section over the remaining length of the beam vertical links shall be provided at a spacing not exceeding d by 2 here d is the effective depth of the beam so over the remaining length the vertical links shall be provided at a spacing not exceeding d by 2 so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box if you have any queries your comments are always welcome and also share it with your friends do subscribe this channel for more videos thank you for watching